five, four, three, two, one. Yay! Let's see if this works. Hi, how are you guys? <laughs> I did an arts and crafts project, so to do a countdown timer. I'm trying to be all fancy. Maybe I'll try something else next time. But we're having fun with this. I mean, if blogging is not fun, why am I going to do it? Well, because I love it. Um, anyway, how are you guys doing? Um, I'm going live today. It is a Tuesday. I won't be going live on Thursday because um, I won't have any help on Thursday. So there is no way I can do an hour-long live with three little kids running around. It will be horrendous. But really fun. Um, so I'm not going live on Thursday. I'm going live today and potentially tomorrow. We'll see how everything lines up. But I'm live here today and I really want to focus today on um, Tailwind and Pinterest. I have this Tailwind strategy that I published two years ago. Um, I looked at the date on the post. It was October 2016 and I've been using it since ever since a couple months ago when Tailwind actually introduced looping, which is still in beta. But I want to show you guys how I did semi looping with Tailwind and give you guys a live demonstration of setting it up on your Tailwind account so that if you're not in the beta group yet for looping and you want to figure out how to do this, it's a great strategy that you can use right now. Um, and there's some tips and tricks I'll share kind of like how you can adapt it now with the new tips that we've learned about Pinterest. All right. Hi, Heather. Hi, Claire. Um, yeah, a little nice surprise on a Tuesday afternoon. I hope this guy, this works. You know, like, it's not, I try to be consistent with my Thursday lives, but sometimes things happen, so at least I'm trying my best to still stay consistent weekly, to be here with you guys and help you. Um, sometimes the time doesn't line up perfectly, sick kids, vacations, family stuff, so I'm here. Um, yeah, Gretchen says, have I seen an increase in traffic with my new pin challenge? Um, yes, my indicator, my traffic indicator on Pinterest itself on my profile is up. So that's a good sign. Um, and then my blog is doing semi well for like the summer slump. So I'm super positive. I think like my sales are still pretty good. My traffic's still pretty good, even though we're in the middle of summer and most people are on vacation right now. And um, next week I will be on vacation. So next week I'm going to try my best like not to look at any traffic numbers or sales numbers and just kind of be a family and take a week off. Yeah. And Christina. So yes, I have, <laughs> I figure like if you guys show up live and you're taking some time out of your day, there's a fly away. You're taking time out of your day to come watch me live. Um, I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. So I want to give you a little reward. So right now, up until five o'clock this afternoon, which is three hours from now, all of my products are 25% off with the coupon code coffee. So yeah, I figured like, don't make it some kind of weird coupon code. Cause then it's like hard to remember. So it's coffee. So you can check out anything for 25% off until five o'clock, which is three hours from now. But let's dive into Pinterest and Tailwind. And let me show you guys what I do before Tailwind started rolling out this looping strategy which I keep reaching out to them and asking them if I'm allowed to tell you guys about it. And I see other people are doing it. So I don't know, but I have not given their, I have not received a green light from them. So I'm not going to like do anything against their policies. So, okay, let's go straight into it and show you guys how I use Tailwind. Okay. When you're ready to sign up for Tailwind, if you do want to sign up for Tailwind, you are welcome to use my affiliate link. It's startamomblog.com slash tailwind. Um, and I'll be very happy if you do. If you don't, that's fine. Um, tailwind is great. I would suggest if you are going to do Pinterest, which you should as a mom and a blogger, I would either suggest manually pinning or using Tailwind. Um, there's other services that are no longer approved by Pinterest. So definitely either use Tailwind or do manual pinning if you have the time. If you can do both, that's amazing because you can schedule some evergreen stuff on Tailwind and then you can manually pin maybe like your new pins or maybe more seasonal stuff. Anyway, so that's what I recommend you do. If you're going to use Tailwind, 
go ahead and sign up for it. I'll show, I'll go to my dashboard. I'm always nervous kind of like going on the back end of my blog and my stuff. I'd never know like when my credit card number is going to show up or my passwords or something that people might should not see. Anyway, I am in, oh, I'm going to take a deep breath. I am in mom life, happy life account. So I have a couple different, um, tailwind accounts for my different blogs. I'm in the mom life, happy life one right now. So if you go to Pinterest and you look at mom life, happy life, on the profile of it. You can see, okay, here are the pins that I have. If I go to my boards, I have my personal boards, like that my mom life, happy life featured one, um, some keto snacks, mom hacks, mom blogger advice, parenting. So I have some of my personal boards and then I have some group boards and you can see their group boards by this little icon here. You can see there's more than one contributor to it. So parenting advice, and tips there you can see it's a bigger group board it has 14,000 followers and almost 300 pinners so definitely not one person is pinning to this all right so if I go back to my profile this is kind of where I am all right so when you go and you connect it with Tailwind you'll be able to play with all your boards and your group boards Tailwind will be able to see what you have on your Pinterest account so if I go to Tailwind what I did with my looping strategy, my semi-looping strategy with Tailwind was, here you go. Here is the strategy, it's all on my blog. Um, you can search, just type in Tailwind loop on Google and this is the first post that comes up. So um, you can see here how I use the strategy. I, because I had multiple group boards on Start a Mom Blog's Pinterest account, I could set up seven. For today's tutorial, we're just gonna go through four. So we're just going to set up four group board lists so that I don't overwhelm you guys. So first thing you want to do um, is find your best boards and then from those group boards, set up your board list. So in Tailwind, you can go into insights and you can go into board insights and you have to take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt because these scores and so on what i've heard is just based on tailwind users so if that person doesn't have tailwind then they're not factored into these numbers but what you want to do when you go into board insights click on virality score like sort that from top to bottom and then you want to take off your secret boards which is that one and then for now because pinterest is favoring like more personal niche boards. Um, previously, I would remove my regular boards from this, but now I'm gonna keep them on there. So here I can see my best boards with the highest repin to pin ratio. Um, you can sort them here. So that means the a pin that's on that board gets pinned, repinned on an average about like 11.62 times. But always take this with a grain of salt because this could mean that there were like a couple pins on that board that com went completely viral and they're skewing the data. So this is good to look at these stats, but like sometimes there could be a group board, say for example, Everything Parenting, that looks like it has a super low virality score, but maybe like it could be really, really good for you. So don't just base everything off of these numbers. They're good to look at and they're helpful, but take everything with a little grain of salt. All right, so now if you know your best score group boards and regular boards, we will go over to publisher and go to board lists. So I'm just gonna pick four for this example and not go through all seven. The more board lists you set up, the longer you can semi-loop them. Um, it's, I'm really bad at explaining this, but it's, let me try to. Um, we're gonna go in and add a list. I've already added two. Let's start over. I'm just gonna go from the beginning. All right. So what I would do is go into Board Insights. Let's go back in there. We'll take secret boards away. And let's just for the heck of it, take our top boards here. Okay, I'm gonna copy them 
just kind of like that. Very easy to select them, copy them. I don't think there's an export. No, there's no, maybe, there, no, I haven't seen an export. Okay, let's go to Excel. I'm getting all nerdy on you guys right now. Like if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this right. So I'll show you guys how to do this. Okay, let's see if I paste. Okay, I'm pasting them here. Okay, sometimes it like cuts these in. There's a little formatting Ooh. issue. Okay, do that, delete it. How do you unmerge, unmerge, there you go. The first cell is kind of thrown off. Okay, so here we can see our first and our best board is Frugal and Money Saving Group Board. Um, that's our most viral one. And then it's I Love Being Catholic. We're probably not gonna pin to that one a lot because not a lot of my pins are Catholic. Then parenting, their marriage, parenting tips and advice, work from home mommy tips, um, family lifestyle bloggers, and mommy blogger topics. Okay, so those are our boards that we're gonna pick. And I'm even gonna pick, um, like this one is one of my own personal boards and this one's a personal board. If the content fits, I'm gonna pick more general boards so that I can add more pins to them. Otherwise, if they're super niche, I might manually pin to like super niche boards and not loop to them because I might not have that many pins to actually loop to a super niche board. If you do, that might be really good. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we have our boards. We'll go back to Tailwind. Um, okay, let me just look at, doo -doo -doo. cool, Brandy says she wants to know how I'm using Tailwind now. Good. Um, just answering some questions. Um, what course, Michelle says, what course would you recommend after blog by number? Either list by number or ebook by number or theme by number if you want to invest in a more professional theme. So either one of those three. Okay, sorry, let's go back to Tailwind. Um, I'll go through this example and then I'll answer some questions because I might just get completely thrown off my groove. Okay. So we're going to Publisher, going to Board Lists, and we're pretending we're starting from scratch here. We have nothing here because I just deleted some. Okay. So now we're going to add a new Board List and we're going to add this one this one, this one, this one. Let's do four for now. I would recommend adding some personal boards in there. Let's see if we have a really good personal board that I might wanna add in there. It might not have the best virality score, but I think it will be really good to um, mom blogger advice. You can see they're not personal boards because they, or I mean they're personal boards because they don't have the little um, group icon there. Let's see. We can loop it to your own feature board too, if you want to. Okay. So let's, for this example, take these four boards. So I'm going to go at a new board list. And because they're all, okay, these are money saving. These are parenting, marriage, parenting. Let's pretend they're all in the parenting niche. You find your best boards that are all in the parenting niche. So parenting list one, and we're gonna go ahead and take our group. So you can take frugal and money saving group board there. Then parenting with a little star. That's our second one, then marriage. Then parenting tips. Okay, so that's our first group board. Now we're gonna take our second group board list so these are all lists, so parenting list two, and we're gonna skip one. So instead of starting with frugal and money saving, we're gonna start with parenting. So parenting, then we're going to marriage, then parenting tips, and then we end with the first one we had there, frugal and money saving tips. Okay, so you can see we're kind of pushing one down and starting from the top again. So two more lists to make so that we can loop through all of them and we have all the combinations of these four group boards. Parenting list three, 
Now, instead of starting with parenting, we're starting with marriage. Marriage, parenting tips and advice, frugal, and the last one is parenting, the one that we started up there. And now the last group board is parenting list four. And we're making four group boards because we have four, four lists because we have four group boards. So we're starting with parenting tips, frugal, parenting, and marriage. Okay. So this normally takes the longest time, especially if you're setting up seven of them and you're going through seven boards and you're like pushing one down every time so that your board, your board list starts with a different group board, but it goes in the same order. I hope that makes sense. If you need more detail, um, it's all in this blog post. All right, so now that we have our four boards lists here, um, just a side note, I would advise that these are all in the same genre and same niche because you're gonna be looping pins to them and you don't want, you want them to be like similar. Um, and you can also add personal boards in here. Don't just loop through group boards, loop through personal boards too because I think Pinterest is gonna put much more of an emphasis on personal boards. All right. So now that we have our list, the hard work is done. Now we can go to Pinterest and you can go to the board where you wanna go select pins. So these are our pins. Let's make this big again. That we can choose from. Um, let's, okay, and then once I'm here, I use the Tailwind Chrome extension. Yeah, you guys can see it here. Okay, so the Tailwind Chrome extension, Tailwind Chrome, there you go. Just type in Tailwind Chrome extension and it'll be right there for you to install. So when you're on Pinterest, I click on that little Tailwind Chrome extension. I select four pins right now because I have four different board lists, so I'm gonna loop them through those board lists. So here's a good one for parenting. Here's a good one for parenting. Um, here's a good one for moms. And then mom hacks. All right, so we're gonna go and schedule these four pins. And the more board lists you have, the more pins you can select at a time. So here we're gonna type in, the reason why I put that numeral next to that board list is because it's easy for me to then schedule them here. Um, I can just type in the board name and it's gonna take parenting list one. I type in two here, parenting list two. Type in three here, parenting list, list three. And four, parenting list four. So you can see this pin is gonna to go to frugal money saving tips, then parenting, then marriage, then parenting tips and advice. And then this one's gonna go um, to the same boards but on a different date. So I'm not gonna be spamming any of these boards because I'm not going to be putting four new pins on it every single day. I'm gonna put one pin on one of these boards per day. Now with the interval down here, which is pretty cool, you can select that. If you wanna be super conservative, you can change this one day to like, seven days. You can pin a new pin to that specific board um, seven days or like every seven days. So you can have the interval be much longer than one day. I am fine with doing one day. Um, if your boards don't move that fast, if the feed doesn't move that fast, if there's not that many contributors to it, then um, space it out a little bit more. Otherwise do one day. For this example, we're just going to do one day. And I'll show you how to actually see how fast that, that group board moves. Um, so we'll go ahead and say set interval. So this pin is going to go to frugal and money saving tips today. Then it's going to parenting tomorrow, then marriage on Thursday, then the last one on Friday. And the same for this one. We'll do another interval of one day. You can see this one's going to parenting on today, marriage tomorrow, different boards every single day. So just go ahead and click on set interval for all of them and click on schedule all. So this should fill your queue for four days. For the next four days, there's gonna be four pins that go to four different boards for four days. So if you could then manually pin in the meantime, go through some of your very niche pins and pin those to niche boards, you at least know that there's something happening in the background, tailwind is looping some of your pins 
in case you don't get time, in case you have sick kids, in case life happens and you don't get to Pinterest. At least something is happening, happening in the background. So I feel like Tailwind is my help, like when, like my automation when I don't get to Pinterest. Okay, let's go ahead, close that. So now if I go to Tailwind, I can go to my scheduled pins and they should really show up here. There you go. So you can see the ones that I just scheduled are in my loop. You can see the ones that are, um, that have the little circle to them, the little red circle, I know that's really small and hard to see. They're actually in that special beta group of Tailwind looping. So you can see I have pins that are actually looping for me and Tailwind's taking care of that. Um, but if you wanna try this semi-looping strategy, you can see the ones are being scheduled and they're going out the next couple of days. All right, here you can also see like the little red circle there next to the post, that's because they're on the actual looping side of Tailwind. I hope that's not confusing. So if you're new to just joining Tailwind, um, recently Tailwind started a looping strategy, a looping feature, and that's still in beta, so it's coming out soon. Um, I'm testing it. But if you are not in the beta group and you wanna try out Tailwind, I just went through my semi-looping strategy, so you're welcome to use that. All right, that is a lot on Pinterest and Tailwind. Let's go into some questions that you guys have. Doo, 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 doo. I didn't mean to ignore you. I just didn't want to like lose my train of thought. Okay. Mm. Okay. Um, Sherry says, I have a homepage main freebie of free stock images. Cool. Very cool. I love free stock images. Um, just starting to build my new blog. Any suggestions on how to weave the free email course into the strategy? Can both these freebies be the basis for my first Pinterest, my first Pinterest pins? Um, Sherry, so you're probably referring to the email course webinar that we had last week, and you're thinking about like how can that weave into the freebie that you already have? So say for example, you have like a checklist, or like you said, you have free stock images. How can you beef up that freebie? with the knowledge that you have from last week. Awesome. So what you can do is with the free stock images, you can give them, you can make the freebie even better. You can say, okay, get these free stock images and the free course that shows you how to use these stock images in creating beautiful pins. So then you can send them a lesson every day of like, if it is, I just want to make sure, like, are you creating a freebie on using Pinterest or? Okay, well, if you're giving free stock images, you're probably catering to online marketers and content creators. So the free course could be how to use these stock images. Now that you have them, what do you do with them? How do you actually get the most out of them? And every day in that five day free email course could be a tip to actually have them use the stuff that you have, because that's, really like the big thing about giving freebies away to people online it's great it builds your email list but so many of the people that sign up never go and actually open the freebie they never use it and like it's great now you have their email but they're cold and they're not really interested you want to keep them engaged so that you can build that trust in that relationship so sherry in your email course that goes along with your freebie like tell the people how or tell your readers how they can use your freebie um, to get them more engaged. I, I do that with the free blog plan. That's an actual course on Teachable that I have, but alongside the free blog plan, Teachable course that people sign up for, I have an email course that every day reminds them, hey, this is lesson one in the free blog plan. This is lesson two. So it keeps somebody engaged and reminds them, hey, this is the freebie you signed up for a day ago. Hey, this is the freebie you signed up for two days ago. Because when somebody signs up to your list initially, they're the hottest and they just saw your name. You don't want them to go cold a week later or two weeks later and then try to do a launch and then um, they're, they're super cold and you have to kind of delete them off your list anyway. So the email course goes perfectly with any freebie. It, it alone could be the freebie that you're offering or it could supplement 
a different freebie that you have to get your readers to actually use your freebie. I hope that helped. That was a good answer. If I say so myself. All right. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Brandy. Hi, Christy. Hi, Chrissy. Chrissy says, do you know how to create a direct URL? Could you expand on that? <laughs> direct URL for what? For, for a pin? To put in Pinterest? I need some more information. Hi, Brid. Hi, Keelan. Um, Brandy says, thanks so much for going through your process. Since you mentioned manual pinning, do you still repin your own content or pin straight from your website each time? I thought repinning your own content was now being discouraged. Am I wrong on that? Um, golly, when I'm at my computer, I pin from my website. When I'm on my phone, I pin from my main feature board. So pretty much just what is easiest for me at that time. I hope that helps. So hopefully like one of those work really well and at least one of the strategies could have take off. <laughs> um, cool, thanks, I'm glad it helped you, Lindsay. Um, if I talk too fast or I went through it too quickly, go back and like rewind. That's why online creation and video creating is awesome because you guys can watch this later. Um, also all these lives I am uploading to YouTube. Um, they might not be on YouTube the same week, but a couple weeks from now I have all my lives scheduled. This live will be on YouTube. Oh, yay. Um, Heather says, I updated a pin as part of the challenge and changed some words in the title, but left the permalink alone as well as the slug. The words that I changed are still shown up as the title on the right hand side info next to my pin. Um, okay, so your pin is not updating and not repulling from your site. Good question. I will look into why it's not. I normally do that with Facebook. Facebook has a debugger too that sometimes refreshes it. Was it the same day? Did it happen like maybe it took Pinterest maybe a, a day or two to re-scrape your site? Um, I'll look into that, Heather. Um, Amanda says, hi everyone, I'm new to blogging. I haven't officially got my site up with post, um, but when you guys pen, pen, <laughs> pen a picture to Pinterest, how do you link it to your blog, for example? Okay, cool, basic question. Let's go over that, Amanda. Um, basic, basic question. So once you have a pin, you've created it, it looks beautiful, it's amazing. You put it on your blog as an image. So it's just an image on your blog. And when you pin that image to Pinterest, it'll pull in the URL. So you can either, once you have an image for your blog, let's go, um, this one's good. How to create printables step by step. So if you don't know how to create pin images, um, this is a great little blog post to look at to help you create pin images. Um, there's a little video in here. Anyway, so for example, you have your blog post and you have your pin image. You can either use your sharing buttons. These are Sumo Me sharing buttons that I have here on the side. You can either click on them. So whatever sharing buttons you have, that would bring up all the pin images that you have on your site that you can pin to Pinterest. And I've never pinned this one, so I'm gonna pin this one today. And look, Brandy, now I'm pinning directly from my website. So um, start, that would be great for that one. Okay, so now I'm pinning directly from my site. Sometimes when I'm on my phone, I'm late at night, I would just pin from my phone itself. You can either use your sharing buttons, Amanda, or you can use the Chrome extension. And again, it's just a Pinterest Chrome extension at the top there. And that will bring up all the images too that are pinnable within that post. So once you see that, you can click on the pin you want to save. This little thing will come up, little menu, and you click on save to a specific board. Um, now, when you, when this is done loading, you can go click on see it now and it'll take you to Pinterest. It'll show you the pin URL that that specific image has and now it's on Pinterest. So you can see it's on this board called Start a Mom Blog. Here it is, voila, that wasn't too bad. I know it's kind of tricky. You're like, how do you get those images on Pinterest from your blog? Um, you can either use the Pinterest Chrome extension or the sharing buttons on your own blog. So hope that helps. Yay. All right, back to questions.
Okay. Um, LaWanda says, how can I keep spam comments from coming up on my blog? You can install a plugin called Kismet. <laughs> Finally, I said it right. Kismet, that helps you block spam comments. Um, I have that on my blog. Um, it helps me block the spam comments. I still get them. I still, they still come through, but I still have to approve or like deny them. So they don't show up automatically on my blog because of a Kismet. Um, that's just the plugin I use. There are other ones that you can use as well. Kripa says the internet's not working for you. That sucks. <laughs> Sometimes the internet just doesn't work. Sometimes it's, maybe it's on vacation too, because it's middle of June and it's hot and beautiful outside and people are at the pool. Um, Sherry says, would I insert that into my welcome series? Sherry, when somebody signs up for your free stock images, um, I would have that email course be a sequence that's automatically launched when they sign up for those free stock images. What you can do in your welcome series, um, gosh, I mean, people are probably signing up to your blog through the free stock images, right? So what I would do if I was in your shoes and I know that they signed up for those stock images, there would be a specific email sequence for them. Um, where the first email, because for example, what if this is the first time they're signing up to your blog? The first email could be, hey, I'm Sherry, this is what I do, this is a little bit of my background, thank you for signing up for the free stock images. Here is how you can use them. Here's your first tip. Tomorrow you'll get your second tip on how you can use your free stock images. Um, you can just, that first email can be a welcome for them. Um, unless there's other ways that people can sign up to your blog, then that would require a different sequence. I hope that makes sense. Um, Kripa says she needs more help with Pinterest. So um, in the Block My Number course, I go much slower through Pinterest and how I use it. So if you need more help with Pinterest, the course is awesome for you. Um, there's also a ton of resources on my blog. If you go to startamomblog.com slash everything, um, there's multiple articles on Pinterest. So if this is going too fast for you. Thank you, Brandy. Um, Jolene says, where do you store your images when the pin is created? Do you hide it in your blog post or do you save it in your computer and post from there? I'm concerned it slows down your website. Um, if the images are pretty big, they could slow down your website. There are plugins that actually like smush your images. Um, to make them smaller, you could also save them in a smaller resolution so they don't take up too much of your site speed. Um, I save the, Jolene, I save the images on my blog post so that when somebody clicks on the Pinterest share button, like they all come up. Because if they're saved on my computer, then all these, look at the cool ones I made last night, <laughs> then all these images are not going to show up. Um, so if these images are saved on my computer and they're only, and they're not here, then somebody's not going to pin them. So um, they're on my blog post, but as you can see, this one and these two images do not show up in the post itself. They're hidden images. Um, so yeah, I tried not to, like I tried to save them as, oh gosh, did I not share my screen? Sorry guys. Here you go. So I hide these two, these three. These three are all hidden in the blog post itself. Blog post itself, and this one is the only one that's shown. Um, so if somebody clicks on the little share Pinterest button, they can pick which one they like the most. Um, for example, what if I pick this one to be featured and to be the image that is on the blog post, but when they come and actually share it to Pinterest, they actually like these way more. So then they'll pin the right ones for me. And like I said, I try not to save my pictures in like the biggest format so that it doesn't take up too much of my site speed. Sometimes I'm, I'm not perfect. Sometimes I forget. Okay, back to questions. Um, okay. Um, Joan says, this is not Pinterest related, but I'm having some difficulty creating affiliate links and using pretty links. I do have the manual but I created a link and didn't seem to be working. So Jones, for Amazon affiliate links, you're not allowed to cloak them. Um, so just a little heads up, if it's an Amazon affiliate link, you're not allowed to use a pretty link, be like startamomblog.com slash 
microphone if it's like the Amazon link to this specific microphone. I'm not allowed to do that. But I am allowed to make pretty links for, say, example, my Tailwind um, affiliate link. So my real Tailwind affiliate link is kind of hard to remember. So what I did was I created a pretty link called startmomblog.com slash Tailwind, and that redirects to my um, Tailwind affiliate link. So how you do that is go to your dashboard. Um, go to the Pretty Link plugin that you installed and click on Add New Link. And the target URL, that is, this is your affiliate link you get from your, from the company. The ugly link, we'll just call it the ugly link. And then your pretty link is, say for example, startamonblog.com slash tailwind. So that ugly link is going to redirect to this one. If I go back to some of my pretty links and I type in Tailwind, you can see here if I edit it, <laughs> I didn't spell it right. Um, that is my ugly link from Share Sale. That is my affiliate link for Tailwind but the pretty link is startamonblog.com slash tailwind. So when I go to startamonblog, I'm not trying to inceptionize you guys for signing up through my affiliate link or anything, right? Okay, startamonblog.com slash tailwind, it redirects, you can see it changes real quick and then it redirects to a nice link on Tailwind side. But Tailwind knows that somebody came through my affiliate link. All right, hope that helps. Let's go back through questions. Oh, Jolene says, when you create multiple pins per post, where do you store them to repin? Yeah, I, Jolene, one I have maybe at the top or bottom of my blog post, and then the rest I hide within my blog post. Um, okay, so Lindsay says, how do you add a link in ConvertKit that just opens up the PDF directly so my readers can just view, download the PDF? Hope this makes sense. I have a couple of printables in my new free email course that I want and my readers can easily download. Okay, awesome. Lindsay, you can do this. How do I add a link in, a con in ConvertKit that just opens up the PDF directly? Okay, let's go. If you go into ConvertKit and you're working on your new email course, you want to add a link that goes directly to a PDF. So you're probably creating a new sequence because email courses, what you're working on is a sequence of emails. So we'll go into the sequence. We're going to pretend like we're creating one. Create a sequence. Um, my new email course. All right. So you're going to be adding your emails here, your five day emails. And now within this email, if you want to delight your readers who just signed up, they signed up to get this email course. And now you're like, use this free guide that I have. You can input a link there that directly goes to the PDF. The way you do that is actually upload that PDF to your blog. So you want to go to the back end of your blog, go to media, click on add new because it's a media file, choose the PDF file you want to upload. So say, for example, um, what PDF file do we have on here? Let's just look for a PDF file. There you go. There is my ysiteground.com PDF. Um, we'll upload your PDF. And then what you can go in here, click on edit. And then this file URL, that is the specific link that you want to copy. That is the link that you want to put into your ConvertKit email. Am I sharing it all? Yeah, okay. This is the link you want to copy. When you go back to your ConvertKit email, download the PDF here, have your text highlighted, insert a link, and add it there. So you could tag those subscribers and be like, these ones um, downloaded the PDF guide one. You don't like it's it's good to tag, like to have too many tags so that you kind of know where people are. And if you ever want to just like write a specific email for somebody with a specific tag, it's nice to have an 
a tag for that person. So if you want to, you can tag people who download this specific um, PDF, insert that, and go ahead and preview that. So this is what the email is going to look like for somebody getting it. When they click on download the PDF here, it'll redirect and they'll see the PDF. Isn't that cool? So what you could also do, edit, make it open in a new tab, and then preview it again in your browser. Oh, where is it? Where's my preview? I'm going to delete that one. Preview in browser. Oops, where am I? Here I am. Okay. Preview in browser. Download the PDF. Okay, so now it opens in a new tab. It doesn't direct them away um, from that email. It opens in a new tab. So hopefully that helps. That help, that's how you can easily add a PDF file to your email course. Sandra says, how do you recognize spam comments? Not too hard, Sandra, not too hard. Let me show you. Spam comments normally have, um, let's go in comments. You can see here, okay, there's way too many comments there. Should probably look through them. Okay, so there you go. Carol Simmons, obviously that is um, a very legit comment right there. Wait, where am I? There you go. Sorry. I go to back into my blog, click on comments. I have too many there. Um, Carol Simmons here, obviously she has a real email address. Um, she looks like she has a real blog. She has an image. That's number one. You can see it. She has an image. She's actually writing a legit, um, comment. It has no links in it. Um, Sometimes people address me by name, so you can see Aaron. This one's definitely a real comment, so I'll go ahead and approve this one, approve this one. I would probably reply to it right here because it's easier for me. This one, um, probably not a real comment. Let's cancel. Yeah, misspelling, like things aren't, like things just doesn't look, they don't look right. Um, name is hard to recognize there's no image a lot of times they put links in their comments because they're trying to get a bad backlink to their blog it's it's a it's a terrible way to try to get backlinks and it's normally these are no follow links anyway because they're in comments um navreen mr data solutions that's obviously spam um this one's spam like uh, this one is real. You can see here. Okay. I'm interested in blogging as a way to inform others to make some money and help pay the bills. I'm 65 year old woman. Um, that's obviously a real comment. And then, yeah, you kind of just have to go see some of them are just obviously spammy. So, Oh, look at this one. Oh, that is, that is not even English. It was definitely a spam comment. So we'll just go ahead and flag that as spam. All right. So hopefully that helps. That's, that's a, it's not fun to do go through spam comments. All right, Lindsay says thank you. Um, Jolene says if you're not ready for ConvertKit, do you think MailerLite is a good option? It's a good option if you're just starting out. Um, it doesn't integrate with a lot of things, but if you just want to start out, you're welcome to use whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you have in your budget. Obviously, I recommend ConvertKit, but if it's not for you, no worries. You can use. Um, I mailer light or MailChimp or whatever fits for you right now. Um, I like ConvertKit because they do integrate with all the systems I use. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Hopefully that helps. Um, but yeah, it is it is pricey to start with ConvertKit because it's almost thirty dollars a month. So I feel you. Um, Aliyah says, ConvertKit question, how do you turn off when somebody signs up for your free downloadable lead? The bit when it goes to the, the email, their email, no one is clicking to confirm their email. I want to turn it off. So you could turn off the auto confirm, which I have to double check with ConvertKit if that's still okay to do. If you, I'm, I'll show you how to do it. I'm not condoning it though. Um, okay, so somebody signs up for your form. I think that double opt-in. So um, let's go to something here. I don't even know which one to go into. Yeah, I, have, 
I have too many forms on my thing. Okay, let's go bullet journal. Let's try this one. Okay, so when you go into settings, you can go into the incentive email, and that is the double confirm. So just by checking that box, we turn it off or on. Um, you can then send them that um, the freebie that they want to get, so they have to confirm their subscription to actually get that incentive download. All right, so that's how you turn it off or on. Um, I want to double check with ConvertKit if it's okay to turn that off. I think it is, as long as you have clear disclosure, like when somebody signs up, they're going to be added to your newsletter, they're going to be added to your mail list, and you'll be emailing them hopefully just once a week or every other couple of days and not 20 times a day. No good. All right. Lindsay says, well, when will Tailwind make looping available to everyone? I don't, it's German. <laughs> um, I don't know, Lindsay. Um, I keep checking with them and asking like when looping is gonna be open to everybody. I wonder like if you, if you guys reach out, try to reach out to Tailwind and see if you can be added to their beta testers. Why not, right? Um, let's see if Tailwind has an email. Do they have like help at Tailwind? Okay, yeah. I'm just gonna give you guys this email, help at tailwindapp.com. I'm gonna put it in the comments here. Like email them and ask them if you guys can be added to the looping for Tailwind, why not? Um, I mean, it doesn't hurt to ask. I'm sure that they will be happy to have more testers. So Lindsay, if you wanna try be one of the beta testers, just email help at tailwindapp.com, give them a little bit of a reason. Hey, I've been blogging for a while, I really wanna test it out. Most likely they're gonna like accept you into it too because the more testers they have, the quicker they can solve any of the bugs that they have and then release it to public. Okay, that was fun. Mm. Again, if you guys for showing up and for a thank you, um, I do have 25% off anything in my store of my products, of my courses or eBooks. At the top, you can get to a link that goes to all my products, startamomblog.com slash products, and use the coupon code COFFEE for 25% off anything. It expires in two and a half hours at five o'clock today, Eastern. So you have two and a half hours to do something fun and buy yourself and treat yourself. <laughs> Alrighty, um, I was thinking I might go live tomorrow for something. I forgot what it was. I'll let you guys know if I think about it. But thank you guys so much for showing up. I love sharing the Tailwind strategy with you today. If you have any questions, let's leave them in the comments. This video will be going to YouTube in a couple weeks. And then if you're watching it on YouTube, thank you. Leave a comment below, I'll get back to you. Okay, Kripa, just text me if you want to find, or not text me, don't text my phone. Message me if, um, if I can help you decide what course you need. All right, everybody, have an awesome day, and we are going to go backwards. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Bye. Don't end it. Where? Where do I end it? I always get confused. Stop streaming.